الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبيت في الله a fantastic question was asked and they began by saying what is the first by saying assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh he said what is the position of a layman with regards to the madhahib should he blindly follow a madhahib i heard from the ulama that he should blind follow someone who he sees as knowledgeable is this correct the ulama say that a lay person cannot understand dalil but i don't think that necessarily applies to me not being arrogant and saying and say i'm a student of knowledge what if i can clearly see that another opinion is stronger due to its stronger dalil but my madhab says something else do i need to follow my madhab because i can't understand dalil which is akhla khair fantastic question and in fact it actually opens up so many abwab so we'll just be as brief as possible and to direct to and do the best that we can from our studies and so first the issue of a med, uh, of a madhab the scholars over time have written uh, fairly extensively about this issue about following a madhab and many of the scholars and fiqh and uh, and throughout the history of islam had a madhab first and foremost most of the scholars had madhabs but the issue comes up about blind following, making taqlid. This is what is madhmoon. This is what is actually something which is uh, sinful. When you have the ability to, uh, you have the ability to discern the text, to discern the evidence for some issue, and then you choose to follow your madhab when the evidences show clearly contrary to what your madhab uh, holds. So the point being here is that it is not permissible for us, for example, even to take from a sheikh or what have you. If I know the sheikh is mistaken, I mean, I know, I'm sure of it. Uh, you know, maybe he missed a hadith. Maybe he thought such and such hadith was weak or he uh, uh, acted upon or made a hukum based on a weak evidence or whatever the case may be. And so I know contrary to that from other ulama or because I maybe have the tools to be able to look at that particular issue, then it would not be permissible for me to blindly follow them in that issue. So what I asked the question similar to this uh, some years ago to Sheikh Suleiman al-Rahayli, Hafizullah Ta'ala, and I said, Sheikh, which, which is better to learn uh, uh, fiqh from a madhab or learn fiqh a sunnah? And he answered beautifully, and one day I'll bring it out because I recorded it and we'll translate it. And basically in a nutshell, he said, he said they're the same. He said they're both operating from Dalil. Okay, and, and, I, and that was the, the just of what he said. And although there's a different path, and what I've heard from other scholars of some of my teachers and scholars that I've sat with, that studying a madhab, and this is what I prefer. I prefer that you have that that my for myself or something to study the masail with a madhab, because if you start by just trying to uh, make fiqh from hadith or fiqh from uh, uh, with without any madhab, okay, then a lot of times there or there's there's a possibility that you may not cover certain messiah when you study a madhab a book a text you know on the hanbali madhab or the hanafi madhab or the the shafi'i or maliki madhab you're going through a book a text that has the masail you're studying from the point of the masail these issues and then looking at the evidences to support their view on that issue so then you're getting a, uh, getting grounded. You need to get grounded in something. You need a base in something. You don't start with all the differences. If you start with all the differences, you'll never understand anything. You'll never be able to get, make thought or uh, be precise in uh, studying issues in Messiah. I hope that's clear and we can talk about it further 
uh, in another time. So, uh, so as far as following Medhev, as far as blind following Medhev, no. But as far as this also raises up the the next issue that was in the question about uh, making taqlid of the ulama, and this issue is also some of the scholars make tahrim of that, say absolutely not, and majority of the scholars say no. Uh, taqlid, there's a bit more of a balanced uh, position in that taqlid in those issues, either that you uh, you don't have the ability to make istanbat for dalil, uh, you know, to go into the text and, and use the text and understand the text in a proper way, because it's not just about dalil, it's about istanbat, it's about getting those rulings, deriving those ahkam from the dalil. Someone could give you a, a text and then make a hukum easily. And this is what all the Ahl bidah does, and this is what the ignorant people do. Without understanding how the people, the Salaf, how they applied those texts, how not only did, how they interpreted the text, but how did they apply? Those are two different things. And I don't know how to articulate that better in, in English, but I would say istanbat in Arabic, and, uh, you know, just getting uh, some understanding of the Messiah and the issues. And so the point being is that for most of us, in some issues, we have to blind follow. That's just plain and simple. Let me give you a, an example, and this is not necessarily a fic, but we do it all the time. Most of the things we do, we take it because Sheikh so-and-so said it, not because we went into those texts and we go in depth and made a bath and this and this. But one example, let me give you. Many scholars, as many Salafi scholars, that aren't necessarily from Ahl Hadith, meaning that they are not specializing in Hadith, they blind follow Imam al -Bani. For me, I'm not going to go to the head because I don't have knowledge in that, and I don't have knowledge in that science. So I will blind follow Imam, Imam al-Bani said it was Sahih. He said it was Hassan. He said it was this. Khalas, I go with that because I don't have the ability to go into those things. I don't have the knowledge and the time amongst other things. That's sufficient. Knowledge, no knowledge, no time. So you rely, so you make taqlid in that you have thicka with this ulama, this alim rabbani, and you trust his hukum. What the scholars do say is madhmoom is in issues that every Muslim must know. And that's why when we study usul al-thalatha and we mention the first part, i'lam rahimakallah, ennuhu yajibu alayna ta'allam arba masail al-ula al-ilm, huwa ma'ruf al-Allah, ma'ruf al-Nabi, wa ma'ruf al-Din al-Islam bi al-Dillah. Right. So Imam Muhammad ibn al-Wahhab said, uh, no, verily, Every Muslim must know four things. The first thing is knowledge, and it is knowing Allah and His Prophet and the religion of Islam with its textual proofs. So letting us know from his text, which is clearly supported by the evidence, that there are some knowledge every Muslim must know. And those issues of aqidah, it is not permissible for you to blind follow. So for example, you don't say, well, my sheikh said, uh, you know, we should make ta'wil of the sifat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'm going with that, even though I feel the more literal approach is correct. Or whatever the case, my sheikh said this, my sheikh said that. No, you need to know that your purpose in creation is to worship Allah, not, oh, sheikh so-and-so said, uh, the purpose of creation is to worship Allah. That's it. I don't know anything about the evidence. No, you need to know some basic knowledge uh, of Tawheed. You need to know that for yourself to be able to answer that in the grave. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, in Kitab al-Kirim, uh, I've not created mankind in jinn except for the purpose of worshiping. Now you know the evidence that this is, the, this is our purpose in life, our purpose in the creation. So in those kind of masail, in certain issues, it's not permissible to make taqlid of. Um, so my view, this is my view, and you'll have many other students and ulama who differ. But my view is, if I were teaching fiqh, generally I teach a little bit, I, I, I teach from a text. And most of my background is, 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 is Hanbali fiqh. Khalas, I'm in Saudi Arabia, this is what most of our ulama teach here, and, and so forth. Uh, maybe they teach a book that is fiqh and... and uh, Hadith, like Muwatta Imam Malik and stuff, and you get some of those. Sometimes you get some other thing, some other mashayikh that 
that might teach some other madhahib. But mostly what you get here is Hanbali and Fiqh. If you go to Yemen, if you're with the Salafis, you're going to study Fiqh generally from the point of Ahl Hadith. You're going to study from the from the uh, the Masail out there, Imam Sa'di's book, uh, Imam Shokani. Uh, you know, you're you're not going to study necessarily on a specific madhab generally, but they study what they believe is to be the most uh, correct as far as Turji and of course that's very important that's another issue altogether and uh, you know from from uh, from the hadith because they most of the, the scholars in Yemen uh, their most of their emphasis is hadith meaning that they are you know that is their the you know their dar hadith you know and that's their their biggest focus they focus, they study to hate they study all of the sciences but there are or most of the sciences or many of the sciences but hadith is their thing and so you find the approach generally that i found and i've said this before from the yemeni scholars the yemeni mashaykh of ahl sunnah i'm talking about the salafi scholars not other scholars there that they their approach tends to be more literal even more literal than the madhab of uh, imam ahmed because they really yeah, uh, those they go back to the core text and then they use that they make their istinbat there which is is khair this is a this is khair azim but that does not mean one particular way is necessarily better than the other the best is if someone can make gem meaning that they have knowledge of the madhahib because if you don't have knowledge of the madhahib then you won't be able to uh, adjust and 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 convey your message to other people who have a different view and you may miss something of from the ilm you know it's not just about just because your sheikh made istanbat of that so it's very important to have this uh, roundabout understanding of the sciences and we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil forgive me for running my mouth too long but there's so much to say and it's a huge issue and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us with success with sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina muhammad وعلى عليه وصحبه وسلم